without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Chris. Before I talk about VR, I just want to emphasize that's those aren't scenery packs. Those are that's default scenery. That's what you get right out of the box. Go ahead, update, and you get that stuff. Um, okay, virtual reality. Who here has tried a VR headset on anything? Quite a few of you. Who thinks it's an elitist fad that should go away quickly? <laughs> <laughs> Only one? Well, I, I get sick from it too. Um, I have to admit, a couple of us here, I won't name names, but kind of thought oh, this fad is going to go away. But then I tried it, and uh, I don't think it's going away. I, I think it's going to be one of several futures of, of flight simulation. And uh, I hope to convince you too. We do have a booth out there with an Oculus Rift and an HTC Vive, both set up. Uh, you can sit down and, and try the system. It's not done, but uh, it's usable, and it's, it's worth a few minutes to try it out. So just real quick how VR works, in case, in case you care and don't know. Normally, this is what we render. Sim puts together a picture of the environment in the cockpit and gives it to your monitor, and you're done. We need two of them, we got two eyes. And if you notice, the right eye and the left eye have slightly different, different visions. The right eye has more view on the right side, and the left eye has more view on the left side. But that's not enough either. It has to get warped. So it looks like this, because the VR headset have lenses in them to focus the image to your eye, and it's gonna warp it. So we have to warp it the opposite way so the lens will fix it. Ben's first attempt at this, he got the, the right eye working and not the left eye. It's fast. And uh, we call it VR. <laughs> it's pirate awesome. <coughs> VR features, so what do we have? First of all, it's extremely easy to use. You get your system set up with the VR headset in general, do their room calibration, which lets you walk around your room and identify where there are objects that you're going to bump into. Because once you have this headset on, you're going to lose complete track of where you are in real space. So you set up your environment. But once that's done, as far as x is concerned, there's one checkbox in the graphics settings. You turn it on, and you're done. There's no other hardware needed. You don't need a joystick. You don't need a yoke. You don't need pedals. You can still use them if you want to. Some people have amazing rigs set up at home. You can still use that if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, once it's set up, with the Oculus, you tend to get about 180 degrees, and then you start to lose the sensors. With the HTC Vive, you get a, a 360 right now, because you can put in multiple sensors, so no matter where you turn your head, it can track you. And six degrees of freedom, which means you can pretty much look in anywhere, in any orientation you can imagine. You can go up underneath a wing, it'll still track you. Uh, you can walk around. You can walk around the wing, you can move seats in the cockpit, you can do whatever is comfortable for you but you're limited to your small office space. So we do have a teleport feature which allows you to press a button and it puts out a little arc and you could point to where you want to go. And when you release, it will move you to that spot and will orient you the, the way you want to be. So you can basically move around the airplane without ever leaving your chair. Uh, full 3D cockpit mani manipulation with haptic feedback. So the Garmin knobs in particular are, are a good case for this. So you reach out, you grab it with the controller, and as you turn your wrist to turn the Garmin knob, the knob's turning in the sim, and you get a little boop, 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 boop in the controller so you can feel in your hand the click. So you don't even have to look. You can still count the clicks and know how many, you know, how many kilohertz or whatever you've changed on the radio. Um, our default fleet is going to be fully done so that every button, knob, switch, any kind of manipulator, doors, windows, everything will be completely operable using just the, the VR controller. Uh, we also have the X-Pad, as we're calling it, so Apple doesn't sue us. It's, it looks just like an iPad, though. Um, it will have maps on it. It will have shortcuts, so you can do sim things right there from, from the X-Pad. It's, it's your companion. We don't have this yet, but I'm just thinking in the future how cool it would be, because you can take this right now and you can stick it on the center of the yoke, and as you fly, it follows your yoke, just like you have it mounted there. But how cool would it be if we can get approach plates on there for it? Or do all your flight planning through there, talk to ATC through the you know, submit your flight plan through it. That's where I'm headed with it, because I want you to be, once you're immersed in VR, it's, it's, it's amazing, and you don't want to have to keep taking the headset off to do things in the sim. So I want you to be able to stay in the virtual world. 
So I said our default fleet would be fully supported, but what about all of those other planes out there? So um, authors can make changes to the aircraft to add magnets, and the magnets are places that you could mount things. So like we said, we have the X-pad, you can mount it on the yoke, but maybe you want to be able to mount it uh, on the side window where you have it mounted in your real plane. So the authors can simply add a simple um, a little bit of line to their, uh, to their OBJs to put a magnet there. Uh, other than that, we've done all the legwork to get manipulators working with the controllers. And we've tuned it so that it feels like you're operating the real thing. If you're turning a knob that moves 270 degrees full deflection, maybe it's a, a light, uh, you know, just a light brightness knob or something like that, we've tried to get it so that that same amount of movement in the VR controller will turn the knob. So we've done all the legwork for you, but your planes have to use those same types of manipulators. Um, it can't be custom manipulators. Authors can override our, our behavior if they say, well, yeah, but my OBS knob behaves like this. It's accelerated. So you can change all that and customize it as you need. Um, we don't have guidance out yet, but we will have guidance out for aircraft authors so they can start getting their planes ready for this kind of thing. Um, the best idea, though, is standard practice. Stick, stick with laminar's manipulators rather than writing your own in Lua or Sazzle. Or... I hear this a lot. It's too expensive. Who cares? Get back to whatever feature. It's kind of not true. And I, I take the same, I get defensive for mobile, too, because I also work on the mobile platform. All of this stuff is intertwined. We would not have the ability to do mobile if it weren't for desktop, obviously. We wouldn't have to be able the ability to do VR if it weren't for all of these things. So the beautiful V11 uh, user interface, that started on mobile because we redid a, a whole new GUI framework for mobile and brought it over to desktop. We have FMOD sound now, so the sound is 3D and immersive. I, I didn't even realize how bad it was going to be without this because you, you have the headset and you're turning around constantly. You don't do that when you're sitting there in front of a monitor. You don't get that 3D sound. You don't get the need for the 3D sound. But with the headset, you do. You need that. And it's interesting because you can, you can be sitting in the pilot seat and you could lean out the window in the Cessna and you'll hear how loud it gets when you stick your head outside the window because the thing says, hey, you're outside. I'm going to take down the attenuation that we had there. So without the sound, we couldn't have VR. We had to have the sound. This is a big one. Everybody cares about this one. Performance. In order to get VR running, VR has to be at at least 45 frames a second, or it starts to, you'll get nauseous, believe me. So we're trying to get to 45 and then 60, just in general. So VR is kind of driving this. It's like, you know, VR is like making the sim run a marathon. Like, we got to hit the gym. So we're hitting the gym. Uh, we're cleaning up the graphics pipeline. We're modernizing. Then we'll talk about Vulcan. Everybody cares about Vulcan and Metal. And of course, as awesome as the physically based rendering and the new lighting model and the reflections, as awesome as that is, you have to see it in VR. Because the reflections update as you're moving your head. And each eye has a completely different reflection. So in all of the gauges on the six pack, the garment, and everything, as you move your head, you see the reflections moving with you. It's completely convincing. And of course, this is a big one. Fully functional 3D aircraft. So this has forced us to pay very close attention to the manipulators in the cockpit. Not just that they work, but that they work correctly. So for, for example, if you have a switch, a row of switches in the plane, with a mouse you just click it, you expect it to act. But on mobile that's not true, because on mobile you use your fingers to interact with it. And you don't want to tap it to move a switch. Your brain says, I'm going to move this thing. You want to touch it and you want to move your finger up. So it has to behave properly. And with VR it's the same thing. You don't want to move your hand there and click it. It's a switch. You want to move it, like a lever. Same thing with the gear. So not only are the manipulators, are we putting them on all kinds of things now, but they're also reacting the way that our brains expect them to, because the VR controller and the mobile touchscreen are just extensions of our bodies, whereas when we use a mouse, there's this layer of indirection that lets us cheat a little bit and just let you click things. So everybody benefits. <laughs> Right, so I, I made a quick, I think a quick nine minute video of me actually using the product in my office, just so you can see some of these features uh, live here. Hello everyone, I'm Chris. I'm one of the X-Plane developers. And the purpose of today's video is to give you a very brief run through of uh, some of the features of support for virtual reality headsets with X-Plane 11. 
I'm here in my office slash family room and uh, a little limited on space. So you can see these lines on the ground here represent the uh, the boundaries that I can walk in without bumping into my desk and other things. So if the lines appear, it means I'm on the edge, um, getting close to uh, hitting something and it's warning me. So I'll try to stand in the middle to keep the lines away. But like I said, the office is a little bit limited in space. Uh, I'm wearing the HTC Vive right now and I have two of the uh, default Vive controllers. And you can see um, our own little object models of the controllers here in my view. I'm standing outside of our default Cessna 172 and um, just going to do a very quick walk around just to show you the Vive uh, in particular offers um, 360 degrees. I can turn my head around anywhere. I can uh, trip over some wires here I can get down underneath and we can just look around completely free um, to just look at anything we want on the aircraft. Almost like you're standing in front of the real thing, even in the headset, the, the size and proportion of everything is, is extremely realistic. You feel like you're standing right in front of it. But we can't all have offices large enough to walk around an aircraft, so we have the ability to teleport. So I can uh, just touch one button on the controller here, and you can see this uh, little arc comes out here, and I can rotate it so I can uh, decide which way I'm facing. Um, so if I want to go to the end of the wing here, I can just do that. And now I'm outside the wing get a little closer here and we can uh, look underneath the wing and kind of do like a pre-flight ins inspection and we can just very easily walk around and look at various parts here all right so we'll head into the cockpit now just teleport over near the door here and uh, just grab the door handle so you can see as I bring the controller over to the uh, the door handle and then just make a motion like that the door opens and uh, if I teleport right into the pilot seat here. Okay, so you can see I've grabbed a chair here just so I'm more comfortable. Um, and I'm sitting inside of the seat of the Cessna. It's no problem, I can just teleport again. And now I'm sitting nicely in the pilot seat. Uh, I can choose to sit over here on the right side of the aircraft if I want and uh, you know, fly as a CFI or as a passenger. But uh, let's come right back over here. And I can reach over and grab the door. Close the door there. So you can see we have an iPad, or a little iPad mini here, or the X-Pad as we call it. And uh, I can pick that up with my hand, and uh, I can move the map around and, you know, do our pre-flight planning on here. But for now, we're just going to get started with the aircraft. Just do a quick takeoff just to show you um, how usable everything is. These two uh, blue squares that are showing up here show mount points that I can put the iPad, and I can stick it right there and now it's out of my hands and if I grab the yoke it stays with the yoke but let's just put it over here just so it's not such a distraction so in the aircraft um, essentially everything you could have ever interacted with before is is interactive with the uh, with the controllers it doesn't have to just be the right controller it can be the left controller or it can be both at the same time so you can be you know adjusting the uh, the switches here and adjusting your throttle at the same time let's see we can Turn our master switch on, get our strobes going, our beacon, check the area, put a little throttle, so with the left hand, I'll, let's bring this fuel pump on, left hand I'll, I'll grab the ignition and the right hand I'll grab the mixture and we'll see if we get this started. So I'm just rotating my wrist here to turn the key and then I'll start and then I'll grab the mixture. That looks good. We'll bring our avionics on. And we have our uh, GPS up and running. And uh, we'll just do a quick takeoff here. So I have access to pretty much everything. I can uh, adjust my trim here. We'll set the trim for takeoff. Fuel tank looks good. Uh, we can adjust the flaps here, but we'll do a flaps up departure. So with, uh, with this hand, I can grab the yoke. Just rotating my wrist here to turn the yoke and then pitch up and down to uh, adjust the pitch here. Come down here and turn the parker brake off. Now we'll grab the throttle. Just move the brake forward and try to track the power line. Yeah. 
I can let go at any time and have both my hands back and the yoke will hold that. Same pitch and roll. Can look around. Back behind us. And we can enjoy a nice sunset. So I've turned the autopilot on here just so I can let the plane stay stable here and not have to worry about babysitting it. Well, I show you that uh, even the um, you know, the Garmin displays here, we can completely interact with them just as you would you go to direct and we can just rotate our wrist. And I, you, I don't know if you can hear it, but the um, there's feedback in the controller, so it makes it a little click just like the Garmin knob would each time you turn it. So if we're going to go direct. Uh, So one other quick thing I'll show you is I can just press the menu button on this controller and it brings us to uh, our hangar here. And let me just teleport behind. I'm thinking I'm facing the wrong way. There we go. So I can come right up to our little whiteboard here, which we have our menu on. And this is the standard X-Plane menu, uh, the free flight menu. And I can pick the MD-80, for example. Uh, we, you know, we can adjust our weather and time of day and everything that you normally can. Just going to show the MD-80 really briefly because it's kind of an amazing aircraft, especially in... in uh, a VR headset, um, the entire overhead panel, every one of these buttons and knobs and switches you can completely interact with, uh, even these little uh, guarded switches like the, uh, I think these are the starters here, the engines are already running, but that's the great thing about VR is you can fool around with this stuff, but you can interact with all of these things and close the switches when you're done, and we'll go and turn the wipers on. We'll go along the dash here, and you know, it's an amazing amount of uh, of things you can interact with. Even the, uh, I think it's this one down here, you can adjust your lighting. If you can see the flood lighting here on the window changing as I do that. Of course, the FMS works as well. You can punch in each key that you need to. And like with the Cessna here, I can, I can teleport over to the other side. And I can be first officer on this side, or I can teleport back here, right in front of the door, open the door, and I can go and sit back here as a passenger if I'd like to. So that's it, just a quick run through of some of the features that we, uh, that we have coming in future updates of X-Plane 11. Uh, VR is a really big topic, so we may do uh, a video devoted to each feature where we can spend some more time discussing it, but I wanted to keep this video as, as short and, uh, and quick as possible for the, um, the presentation of Harper. So one thing you don't realize from the video is that wearing a VR headset, the size of everything is realistic. We don't we don't do graphic user interface anymore in pixels. Usually, you know, 640 by 480. The the API asks us for meters. So when I made that whiteboard, I said, well, it's six feet. It's two meters. Um, so when you stand outside of an airliner, you do this, and you're just looking at a tire that's like this tall. When you stand outside the Cessna, you duck underneath the wing. Like it's extremely realistic as far as the size of things goes. So I'm gonna. Over to book.